Hey everyone, welcome back to another ranking video, or if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. Today we're going to be ranking the, in my opinion, originators of Southern Rock, the Allman Brothers Band. Now the Allman Brothers Band been around since uh, 1969, a little before that, but their debut album was released in 1969. And over the years they had a lot of lineup changes, um, a lot of bad luck unfortunately, a lot of members passed away. Uh, but they only have uh, 12 studio albums within, um, you know, from 69 to uh, 2020. And with the death of Greg Allman a few years ago, the Allman Brothers are um, officially called a quit. So they're no longer together as a band, but their legacy is um, unmatched. So I'm going to start from, you know, least to best. And again, this is just my opinion. It's the way I'm ranking the videos, the way I like them. And I'm going to jump right into it. Um, these last two, uh, at least for me, they're actually, let's see if I can, I'm not sure if they have a picture of them inside here. No. They're actually a, uh, a split on this remastered version, digitally remastered. Coming in last for me, Brothers of the Road, which is the one right here. Brothers of the Road was released in, uh, 1981, and uh, to me, it's almost unlistenable. Uh, features, uh, J-Mo is not on it, features Greg Ullman, Dickie Betts, and Butch Trucks is on there, uh, the only three original members on there. I mean, 10 tracks, just, just hard to listen to, it's just not, not really that good. Uh, a lot of these tracks I, I don't even remember because I don't, I haven't listened to them that much. So that would be coming in last for me. And then coming in next to last is the other one on this split. This is Reach for the Sky. Um, again, eight tracks. This was released in 1980. Uh, same lineup of Greg Ullman. Um, excuse me. Greg Ullman. Thicky Betts. J-Mo is on it. And uh, Butch Trucks. Uh, Reach for the Sky. Mm. Hell and High Wood that opens it and Mystery Woman are, are okay. But the rest of it's just forgettable. Um, I, don't, I I always felt like the artwork aren't that bad on either album, but the artwork's definitely better than the albums themselves. Um, again, I'm a completist, which is the reason I own those two, uh, especially since they're basically in the middle of the Allman Brothers catalog. But yeah, this is something I rarely go to, but also something I do like having in my collection, uh, especially this digitally remastered split which was released uh, on bgo records from great britain okay coming in next this is from 1979 enlightened rogues uh i always thought the album cover was kind of boring i feel like it's one of the allman brothers bands albums you always see in the uh you know used vinyl sections uh when it came out it was a big seller I believe it went gold, or I don't know if it went platinum, might have went gold. Uh, produced by Tom Dowd, which, you know, saying something. The opening track, Crazy Love, is probably the best song, in my opinion, on here. Um, but I feel like the band went to a more soul R&B direction on this. Uh, it's, it's a very soul sound, as I, I want to explain it. And they, they kind of fell victim to that late 70s... Uh, I guess like salt rock feel, not necessarily, uh, definitely not disco, but not danceable, but more of a salt rock, almost like how the country artists were doing. But again, this is a Southern rock band that was known for their amazing guitar solos, and it's just not that eventful on here. And like I said, the, the cover, um, the cover art's pretty boring. All right, getting to the rest of them, I feel like they're much better than the, the, the first three I showed. Uh, coming in next for me, this is Shades of Two Worlds. This was released in 1991 with featuring Warren Haynes on guitar. Um, much better than the uh, first three albums I showed. Again, produced by Tom Dowd. Uh, really cool picture. Uh, kind of, you know, reminds you of that back cover of Brothers and Sisters where all the band is there with their families. But this is the Allman Brothers Band family. You know, you got uh, you got the whole band there. They got a couple other people. I'm not sure who they are. I guess they, they could have been, you know, session musicians. They could have been uh, road crew or something like that. Uh, but yeah, really good. Especially with Warren Haynes' guitar work on here. 
mixing with Dickie Betts. Uh, End of Line, Open is great. Bad Rain's a great song. Desert Blues, Get On With Your Life, Midnight Man, and at the end, Come On In My Kitchen. The cover of the Robert Johnson song is just phenomenal. Coming in next, the Olin Brothers final album, Hitting the Note. Uh, only album to feature uh, Derek Trucks and Warren Haynes on guitar. Dickie Betts is not on this album. Uh, there was a little bit of bad blood with the Olin Brothers and Dickie left in 2000. This was released in 2003. Uh, however, I, I believe Greg may have died in uh, 2014, 2015, around then. And unfortunately, this is the last studio album the band would ever release. And a great way to go out. Uh, the artwork's, you know, don't know what it has to do with hitting the note. But you see, like, the kid looking at the, you know, the mushroom, the iconic mushroom that the Olden Brothers always used. Getting ready to be stampeded by elephants. I always thought that could have been symbolic of something. Uh, maybe the music biz. Um, but this this was a great, this is a great album. Uh, came out to great reviews when it was released, especially by all the music magazines. And I know they were nominated for a Grammy or two from some for your most best instrumental piece on this album. Uh, but the only uh, thing different about this album is the last tra track, Old Friend, only features Warren Haynes and Derek Trucks on guitars. And it's the only Allman Brothers band track to not feature the original any original member. But yeah, this is this is a great album. High Cost of Low Living, Desdemona, Old Before My Time, great song. And it's cool to hear, uh, you know, the guitar work of, of Derek Trucks and Warren Haynes together, which are, they're just phenomenal together. And you hear a lot more of them on the live albums. Um, what's, uh, drawing a blank right now. I know the, uh, I believe the Great Woods show, which was actually, you know, from the Hit the Note tour. It's a great DVD if you want to find it. Coming next for me from 1994, Where It All Begins. Uh, features some of Warren Haynes' best guitar work with the Allman Brothers. Just great stuff on here. It's great Dickie Betts compositions like Back Where It Belongs, um, Change My Way of Thinking, Mean Woman Blues. It's definitely reminiscent of early 70s. Allman Brothers, uh, Sound Across the Devil's Sea. Great track there with uh, Greg Allman, and Soul Shine, writ written solely by Warren Haynes. Great, great track, and uh, it was kind of a minor hit for the band. Didn't get a lot of radio play, but uh, definitely a cult favorite, and I always like the cover art. I think it's really cool. I mean, you got that blue around there, but then you got the, the mushroom in there with the, uh, you know, that cool painting of a, you know, I guess it would be a swamp. Pretty cool. All right, coming next. First album to feature Warren Haynes, this is Seven Turns, released in 1990. Uh, this was the Allman Brothers' first album in nine years after uh, Joan of Blank right now because it's such a terrible album. Brothers of the Road, since Brothers of the Road was released. And, uh, you know, Greg Allman did a lot of solo stuff in the 80s, uh, had a huge hit with Al No Angel. But once the band got back together, they started touring again. They, they definitely had a huge revival, especially with that, um, you know, jam band, 90s stuff. Uh, the Grateful Dead, they uh, they emerged in the late 80s with 87 with, uh, you know, the Touch of Grey video. And they were touring again even more than they were, you know, previously in the early 80s. So they got a lot of that jam bandy stuff. A lot of 90s bands came out. Uh, like Rusty Root and Dave Matthews Band, which were considered all jam bands. But the Auburn Brothers, again, I, I always felt like they had the best jams of going on. Just the, the guitar leads are great. Uh, good, clean, fun, it opens it, let me ride, load down, dirty, mean, shining on, loaded dice, seven turns, the title track, which is written by Dickie Betts, Gamblers Roll, True Gravity, and it ends with It Ain't Over Yet, which is a cover. Um, but yeah, Dickie Betts and Warren Haynes just work incredible together. And to see this unknown guy named Warren Haynes come into this legendary band and make them better is just amazing. Uh, cover art is, um, I guess, typical for the times, 1990, not too eventful. Uh, there wasn't a lot going on, especially for classic rock bands in the 90s. But this is a great album. All right, coming into the top five. Coming number five, Win, Lose, or Draw. Um, First album to feature, you know, without the two original members, Dwayne Ullman 
and Barry Oakley. Uh, Can't Lose What You Never Had, Just Another Love Song, Never List, Win, Lose, or Draw, the title track, Louisiana Lou, Three Card Monty John, High Falls, Clocks in Over 14 Minutes, such a great, great jam, and Ends With Sweet Mama. It's a great, great, great song. Um, I feel like the writing on this definitely suffered, but it's not a bad album. Because you're basically down to Dickie Betts and Greg Allman doing mostly all the work on here. And at the time, Greg was really getting into alcohol and drugs. And he wasn't in the best shape. Uh, I know there was a little animosity between him and Dickie. But again, the Allman brothers had such bad luck. They lost two original members in, in Dwayne Allman. Not only was he the original guitarist, he's also Greg Allman's brother. And obviously Barry Oakley, who died a, a year later on bass. So uh, this album, to me, almost feels like they were just fulfilling their contract. But again, it's still a good album. It's just not as great as the ones that would come before this. And with that being said, these four are really hard to rank. So I'm sure a lot of people will disagree with me on this. But coming in number four for me is Idle Wild South. Uh, this is the 45th anniversary remastered edition I own here on CD. Um, so... When this album came out, it was shit on. The critics hated it. Uh, didn't really chart. Uh, this was the Ullman Brothers, you know, almost like last gasp to try to make it. And it just didn't happen for them. But there's great songs on here. And at, at the at time, this Southern rock stuff was new. And a band like the Ullman Brothers, uh, the transitioning in from the psychedelic 60s and, you know, Brit pop scene into the 70s, which was more... You know, uh, you know, it was heavier, it was harder, but so, like I said, Southern rock was something totally new. So, uh, some great tracks on here though: "Revival," "Don't Keep Me Wondering," "Midnight Rider," which was released as a single, but didn't do huge for the band. "A Memory of Elizabeth Reed," which obviously would become a well-known live song for the band. Uh, "Hoochie Coochie Man" is the cover, obviously. "Please Call Home" and ends with "Leave My Blues at Home." And these songs on here, like uh, "Reviver." Revival, excuse me, Midnight Rider, Elizabeth Reed, they will become much popular and much bigger on the follow-up to this, which is a live album at Fillmore East, which in my opinion is one of the greatest live albums of all time, definitely in the top three. But it's not being featured in this list because I'm only doing the studio albums of the Almonds. Um, yeah, great, great album. You got the whole lineup on there. Unfortunately, this is the last full album to feature, stu last full studio album to feature um, Dwayne Ullman on guitar. But yeah, really cool stuff. And again, it was hard for me to rank this to four because at one time I would have put this at my number one just because I loved it so much. All right, coming number three for me, Brothers and Sisters. Great album. This was their really huge commercial breakthrough. Uh, obviously on the strength of Ramblin' Man, which is arguably the Ullman Brothers' greatest hit, uh, their biggest hit. I don't know about their greatest, that's all opinion, but it's definitely their biggest hit. Uh, along with Jessica, which is the instrumental hit. And for a band to have an instrumental hit, which still gets played on classic rock radio to this day, is uh, something amazing. Not a lot of bands can say that. Um, the only ones that really come to mind is maybe Frankenstein by the Edgar Winter Group, along with Jessica, but no other really instrumentals I can think of. Yeah, on top of my head, I can't think of any. Uh, opens up a waste of words. I love that. Obviously, it goes into Ramblin' Man, uh, Come and Go Blues, such a great signature All My Brothers song. Jelly Jelly, Southbound, Jessica, it ends with Pony Boy. And that's that back cover I was talking about earlier, where you got the band members and their uh, relatives on there. Um, yeah, it's such an iconic cover. I mean, it's so simple. I don't even know who the kid is. Might be one of Greg's kids, not, not positive on that. Um... But this is the last album to feature Barry Oakley on it, as he only played on two tracks, I believe, which were Wasted Words and Ramblin' Man. Ramblin' Man, written by Dickie Betts, featuring Dickie Betts on vo uh, lead vocals. Uh, his first really big song, and obviously it was the biggest song for the band. Such a great album. Again, it was hard for me to rank it three and put these two above it, but coming at number two for me, Eat a Peach. Now, I know there are some live tracks on here, but overall it is a studio album. Uh, this is a tribute to Dwayne Allman, who unfortunately died uh, the year before of a motorcycle accident, uh, unfortunately. Uh, opens up with Eight Wait, Waste and Time No More. Great song. Uh, Le Brer in A Minor, which I know Dwayne did play on 
I'm sorry, I don't think Dwayne did play on that. Dwayne plays this album, except for Labor Air and A minor. He doesn't uh, play on Melissa. And I believe Blue Sky, he does not play on. Or is it ain't wasting time no more? Oh, anyway, I can't. I can't remember. I feel like he only plays on three songs. Uh, features a huge hit, Melissa, which was featured in like a cell phone commercial, I think, years later. Um, not years later, maybe about you know fifteen, twenty years ago. Uh, Mountain Jam clocked in at over a half hour. It was actually the original side two of the vinyl and continued on the on the original side four of the vinyl. One Way Out, another classic Allman Brothers band tune. Signature tune for them. Trouble No More is great. Stand Back, great track. Blue Sky, featuring Dickie Betts' first, uh, I believe that's one of Dickie Betts' first vocals. Uh, great song, first lead vocal. Great, great song. And it ends with the instrumental Little Martha, which is you know, Dwayne Allman. And uh, just an amazing album, so iconic. Uh, that Peach has become synonymous with Allman Brothers Band. Just really good stuff. And again, it was number two for me was hard to pick between this brothers and sisters and um Idle wild south and brothers and sisters as much as rambling man is overplayed it's still one of my favorite own brothers band song I and mean, that guitar work is just insane especially the solo that ends it but if, for me i mean the half hour mountain jam melissa blue sky and little martha itself just put a little little over for me all right coming at number one the self-titled debut album, The Yeoman Brothers Band. Um, wow, such a groundbreaking album. Uh, just like the first Southern rock album that would ever be released. And obviously, it would inspire so many other bands. Like, uh, you know, the most obvious one is Leonard Skinner. But then you would get into 38 Special, um, Marshall Tucker Band, Molly Hatchet. You know, all the Southern rock. But, um... Just great stuff. I don't want you no more. It's not my cross to bear. Black hearted woman. Trouble no more. Great. Every hungry woman dreams. Signature All My Brothers tune. Just great. And uh, Molly Hatch would go on to cover it to an extent on Dreams I'll Never See. And it ends with the whipping post. Greatness. Whipping post, in my opinion, is the greatest All My Brothers band song. And... Again, it's it's the live staple. It's the one they always have to play. And the longer version, which was released on At Fillmore East, is the one that most people know. And it's the most famous version of it. But Whipping Post is so good. Uh, only seven tracks in here. And it's a really, really bluesy album. It's very bluesy, but I feel like Greg Ullman's Southern vocals and Dwayne's slide guitar is what makes it Southern rock. So Southern rock is basically a mix of uh, just hard rock and blues. And you got that country tinge, that country influence, but there's nothing full country on here. It's just that that down south uh, juking accent, the vocals, just that down south, you know, southern blues playing, which makes southern rock such a great album. I love this album. All right, so uh, and again, when this came out in '69, it was so different that no one really take a drink real quick. No one really got it. No one really understood it, and it wasn't until at Fillmore East when the band really started being noticed and really break ground, and uh, that was their third release after this debut album, uh, the Allman Brothers Band and Idle Wild South was their sophomore release. All right, I'm going to recap real quick. Uh, Come at number one for me, self-titled Allman Brothers Band. Number two, Eat a Peach. Number three, Brothers and Sisters. Number four, Idle Wild South. Number five, Win, Lose, or Draw. Number six, Seven Turns. Number seven, Where It All Begins. Number eight, Hit the Note. Number nine, Shades of Two Worlds. Number 10, Enlightened Rogues. Number 11, Reach for the Sky. And number 12, Brothers of the Road. And that's it for my uh, Allman Brothers Studio album ranking. As you can see, they don't have a lot of huge, they don't have a lot of studio albums for being around as long as they were, but they have many, many live albums, which are amazing. And I've never bought a Allman Brothers live recording that I did not like. They're, they're all great. Although there are a lot with the uh, set list of Drain Allman where they had just the two albums released. 
So there's a lot of that, but that's mostly because people want to hear Dwayne. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Um, if you like what you see, please like the video, subscribe. And the more subscribers I get, the more videos I'll make. Uh, I've been, I know I do mostly all ranking videos now, but I have some other things in mind. Um, maybe a best of um, category, like best of, I was thinking of doing a best of prog rock, best of thrash, uh, you know, best of years. I, I've done some of them years in review. Well, they didn't get many views, so I'm not sure if I'm not with people like them. Uh, along with the, um, you know, collection updates. But I'm also thinking about doing a video of this room, and I think I mentioned that before, of my music room here and, you know, my big collection. So, um, yeah, everyone, like I said, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you want to see more, you can follow on Instagram, at Gary Elysiums. Um, I post a lot of my collection on there, so you can head over there if you'd like. Uh, but, yeah, just, just subscribe so I can get some more videos out there. And, uh, again, thanks, everyone, for, you know, watching again or if this is your first time thank you for tuning in i appreciate it and as always in your comments leave your ranking i'd like to see it and one last thing this is my opinion this doesn't mean this is right doesn't mean i'm crazy it's just the way i would rank them in my listening pleasure so everyone be safe see you next video